Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited for checking out Fun City from Parker Brothers. This is for two to four players. Age is eight plus. I'll take out about 15 to 25 minutes to play. Actually, I'd say about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And in the Fun City game, you are going to be going around town running errands in certain time frames. So let's say you have to go to City Hall between 2 and 4 p.m. And if you do that, you get points. It's a very light, simple, rule and move game where you're moving around the town playing some crazy cards on your opponents, which you guessed it makes people lose turns and do all sorts of different things. Uh, it's a very light, simple, mass market style game, I believe from the uh, mid-80s. Yeah, 1987. But does it stand up to the test of time? Let's open it up. I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Fun City. So first and foremost, we have our handy dandy rule booklet. Uh, seven, eight pages, double-sided. It's got plenty of pictures, illustrations, examples. Should have you up and running in no time. And also big thumbs up on the rule booklet. So in Fun City, what you'll be doing is you're going to be taking your character all around the city and trying to complete errands in the allotted amount of time that you have. All the while playing some crazy cards that will do a variety of crazy different things. How's it work? Let's go over the components. Then we'll get in the gameplay. So first component-wise, you're going to have this big old stack of cards over here which you're going to have various different times on them and these are the times that you're going to have to be at that location in order to gain that number of points and the points are obviously how you win the game you're going to be keeping track of the time on this cool little clock right here which at the beginning of every turn you are going to hit the button like so pretty simple so what are you going to do at the beginning of the game? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to deal out the top four cards, and the cards will be put in order, so you'll start with the 9 o'clock cards, and the 10 o'clock cards, 11 o'clock cards, so on and so forth. So right now, you need to visit the museum, you need to visit the Super Duper Market, and you need to visit Calcutta's New Delhi, which is... And Burger Billy? Let's see, where are those two? Burger Billy and Calcutta's New Delhi. Pretty simple. On your turn, you're going to start with three cards. Read your cards. The most important part is right up here when you can play them. Play anytime. Play on another player's turn. Play before your roll. Put yourself in another player's place. Uh, opponent subtracts eight from the roll and a cancellation card. So nothing really going to help me. So let's show you how it works. So on your turn, first thing you're going to do is you're going to, boom, move the time one spot. Uh, next, if you really don't like your cards, you can discard all your cards and draw three new ones. Uh, you're always going to be drawing back up to three cards. So spend your cards, spend your cards, spend your cards. There's not many, much point to holding on to them unless it's a very specific card. You're going to roll the dice, you're going to move that many spaces. Movement is pretty easy. Uh, you're going to follow the dots. Now the one unique thing here are the bus stops. So if you get on a bus stop, so let's say I go one, two, three, four. If you get on a bus stop, then you can go five, six. You get to move... Uh, for bus stop to bus stop, I count that as one space. And that would be the end of my turn. Very simple turn. Moving on. We'll just pretend it's my turn. Oh. So next guy's turn. First thing he's going to do. Oh, perfect. Uh, is hit this. So now the old hag is trying to cross the street. So there's the slog. It's an old hag. I don't know what slog actually means. But every once in a while, she's going to need to cross the street. If you go over there and you help her cross the street from the super duper market to the library, then she, you get to go wherever you want and pick up a card. So all you have to do is land on that middle slot and you'll be able to help her out. So let's see. Red guy goes. He goes three spaces. Let's just say he's going to go... I don't know, one, two, three, head towards the bus stop. It gets back to me. We'll pretend we're playing a two-player game. Oh, that actually stays in there. Excuse me. Uh, 10 o'clock. So, well, none of my cards are really going to help me still. So I go four. We'll go one. So once it's about a bus stop. Two, three. And then my turn would be over because I have stopped and picked up a card. So there we go. I'm going to have two points at the end of the game. This goes in front of me. Uh, there's very few ways for you to lose this. There is one card in the crazy deck that will let you like flip a card up in the air and potentially take somebody else's cards. But for the most part, once you have these, they are locked in place. And that's points that you're going to be earning. So since I did that, we're going to need to draw the top card. And now City Hall is going to have a card. And yes, you can have more than one card on a location. If you do that, the first person to get there gets both the cards. So super duper nice. Uh, so that's pretty much what you're going to do. And get back to the red person's turn. You'd hit the button. Boom. 1030 now. And they either go up by, I think it's 10 or 20 minute increments, even though that was clearly 30 minutes. So I think this thing might be a little bit broken because in our game, we had one that jumped like 50 minutes at a time. So that probably is just this because one of the kids dropped it. Anywho, red player goes, they go one space, they're incredibly disappointed, we'll talk more about that in the pros and cons, and then it gets back to me. But let's take a look at some of the crazy cards, because I think you get the idea of the game. Oh, and what will eventually happen is, 
you'll get past 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever. And when that happens, you immediately get rid of the cards that you have to complete before that time, and you just put out a new card like so. So Honest Al's cars would get that one. So take a look at the crazy cards, and we'll get you out of here. Add four to your roll. Uh-oh, the Fun City Pigeon. Uh, this, these are just a whole bunch of cards that will just randomly send you to different locations. Change places. Add four. Add three. Add five. Opponent falls asleep. Yes, there are things that will cancel other people's turns no way which luckily will cancel other people canceling your turns uh pickpocket you're gonna flip the card in the air and if it lands face up you're gonna steal somebody's fun city card that one did not land face up in the air so there's a couple of those in there there's another pick pack traffic jam opponent subtracts four double your roll uh your typical mass market style stuff but anywho you're gonna go until uh after five o'clock at which point you won't be able to go to the other locations you will tally up who has the most points down here, and whoever has the most is the winner. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Fun City! Alrighty then, Fun City game from Parker Brothers. Here are my final thoughts. Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, two to four players aren't restricted player count. Also, this is a mass market game, so you're on your turn. You might get your turn skipped, and that can happen quite frequently, especially if you're in first place, because people will be drawing crazy cards uh, pretty much every single turn. If you're not drawing crazy cards every single turn, then you're probably not playing this game right because there's really no penalty to playing your crazy cards. You just want to play them and do different stuff and do different stuff and then draw three. Uh, and you're going to be getting three each and every turn, hopefully, or drawing up to three each and every turn because three is the cap. But still, there's going to be a lot of zany stuff going on. So there is forward planning, but while you're trying to forward planning, someone's going to skip your turn or someone's going to swap spots with you or someone's going to go collect a whole bunch of the cards and then, you know, there'll be cards completely on the other side of the board and your plan will be all be screwed up. So there's not too much forward planning in this game. It is not a strategy game. It is a light mass market game. And that's the biggest con that I have with the game. You have to know that. Oh, and roll and move. Obviously, it's terrible. You roll ones, you're going to lose the game. You roll sixes, you're going to have a very good shot to win the game. Uh, my, my bank also is broken, so it does 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50 minute increments, which, you know, it speeds up the game a little bit. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't really have too many other cons with this game, aside from what I mentioned. Moving on to the pros, I think this is an okay game. That's it. The kids had fun with it. <clears throat> I didn't hate it. Uh, it doesn't outstay its welcome, partially because my, uh, my bank is broken and jumps 30, 40, 50 minute increments from time to time. But still, even if it wasn't, it doesn't really outstay its welcome. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. I like the artwork a good deal. The components are very nice. I don't have any component issues whatsoever except for my bank, uh, which got dropped and is, you know, 30 plus years old. Now jumps a little extra time, but that's not that big of a deal. But it's not a good game. I mean, I'm not going to tell you this is good. I'm not going to tell you it's great. I'm not going to, you know, it's okay. It's okay. That's exactly where it falls for me. Um, I would play it again. I have no desire to ever play it again. Uh, it's not worth searching down. I do like the artwork, and I think the artwork's very humorous in this game. Uh, I'm not sure what a slog is, but I do like that aspect where, uh, you know, that slog can come out, and you can go in there, and you can go to any card you want, and kind of like, oh, no, I was about to grab that, and some kids will have fun with that. But in the end, Fun City is ultimately forgettable. It is a game that has been lost in time, and it will continue to be lost in time because it doesn't do anything uh, very good or very spectacular. It just is and fun city from parker brothers is a game that i can't really recommend to anybody unless you're a collector and then you i mean then obviously you know you're gonna get it because it's just gonna sit on your shelf but for everybody else fun city you can probably take a pass on this unless you can find it for dirt cheap and you have kids that are between i'd say the ages of six to ten or eleven o'clock i will say that's that's another pro that i have with this game it could be used as a potential uh time time lesson where you could work with kids who are having some issues or beginning on the concept of time because it's like oh just look at the clock right now it's 11 20 you have to be here between 10 and 12 o'clock so you can still go there for 40 minutes little things like that you could work with kids with but i imagine there's better games out there to do it with than this but still there you go so it's fun city game for parker brothers it's okay if you enjoyed this review please try to click on that subscribe button down below if you want to support the channel click on that little amazon associates associates link down below buy anything on amazon with the same amazing prices there's a couple pennies my way it really does help support the channel huge thanks to everybody who's doing that and in the comments below let me know what is your funnest city that you have ever been to for me personally i want to say denver i love denver denver's in my heart denver's the best i want to move to denver i want to retire in denver one day but it's vegas it's vegas no doubt about it it's vegas especially in your early 20s oh my god vegas is 
is so fun. Also, uh, second place to Amsterdam, because holy God, Amsterdam is spectacular. I remember I was staying at a hostel that was right on the main street of Amsterdam, and it was terrible because literally the, the city did not close down. It was open all the time. I could not get any sleep. Well, for a variety of different reasons, which I'm not going to mention in this video. But one of the other reasons was, um, well, there's a lot of reasons there. One of the reasons was because uh, it was just super loud coming from that street all night until I left the hostel at like 6.30 in the morning. It was still super loud. So yeah, uh, I'm going to go with Vegas, Amsterdam, and then I'll slide Denver, even though Chicago, New York... I really like San Diego a lot, too. But let me know in the comments below. What is your funnest city? And as always, oh, Sandusky, Ohio. Duh, Cedar Point. But let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Lots of fun cities, Steve.